I remember it like it was yesterday. My family received a phone call one early July morning. My father had been shot and killed from multiple bullets penetrating his right side. I was devastated by my father's murder. My five-year-old mind could not fully conceptualize the gravity or the permanence of death. I remember my aunt getting down on one knee to share with me face to face the horrific news. All I could imagine is that my father and his friends got into his old school cutlass and drove over a rainbow. I trusted, I believed, I knew that he would soon return. As I grew older, I turned to books and the church to explore the effects of tragedy and the advantages of faith. My faith, formed and fashioned in a southern rural black Protestant community, reassured me that trouble doesn't last always. Yet, the more I read, the more I discovered death's finality. What I could not understand as a child that I've come to learn through my research is that we, human beings, determine the power and the vitality of our concepts. Drawing on the best of my own spiritual inheritance articulates complicated notions of faith and dialogue with despair so that one can understand hopelessness yet embrace hope, see indifference but extend compassion, know suffering but nonetheless remain faithful. Thus, it is the sheer pervasiveness of black suffering that draws my research question. I ask, how have faith and despair shaped the black American Protestant tradition? My research question thinks about two fundamental, it, it offers a twofold fundamental intervention. I view black American religious thought as an orientation that seeks to unpack the various and disparate ethical strands within black faith traditions. And I consider the black American literary and philosophical traditions as dynamic discourses that informs community and relationality. My hope is that this twofold intervention helps to nuance the everyday lived experience of black faith practitioners. In 1845, the narrative of Frederick Douglass appeared on bookshelves across this country. Douglass, from slavery to post-escape, exemplifies what it means to stand between faith and despair. In the appendix attached to the end of the book, Douglass raises a strident critique against slaveholding Christianity. Those who subscribe to slaveholding Christianity, Douglas writes, professes to love a God they cannot see, but hate the brother they've seen. Douglas exposes the ironies within slaveholding Christianity and the institution of slavery. One might ask, how can Christianity address the evils of slavery, and simultaneously justify enslavement. Well, across the Atlantic Ocean, the 19th century Danish religious and polemical writer, Soren Kierkegaard, probably unaware of Douglas, begins to investigate the disparaging enlightenment rhetoric that fueled American slavery. Kierkegaard contends uh, that love is synonymous with God. Those who call themselves Christians must adhere to two fundamental principles. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But Kierkegaard stands between faith and despair when he suggests that loving one's neighbor require embracing the neighbor's ontology and how that neighbor relates to the world. Kierkegaard and Douglas, in their own ways, disentangle these disparate ethical strands of Christianity. I can hear 
the black American literary genius, Lucille Clifton, singing along with Douglas and so many others, saying, won't you come celebrate with me, knowing that something has tried to kill me and failed? You see, some modern day discourses suggest that the plight of black folks have scarred their souls so much that they would rather disengage or succumb to some of the uh, pathological inerrancies of white supremacy and hegemony rather than living their lives or existing. This is why my research matters. This is what the dialogical relationship between faith and despair seeks to unpack, that despite the ongoing uh, creations of white supremacy to stifle black existence and deny their beings, black faith practitioners have historically deployed a blood-soaked notion of faith to mitigate the obstructiveness and bleakness of despair. Thank you.